who are being hindered by the Russian hoax. It's a hoax, okay? I'll tell you what, Russia's very unhappy that Trump won, that I can tell you. I was the one that let out 60 diplomats. I was the one that complained about the fact that Germany is paying billions of dollars for a ridiculous pipeline coming into Germany. They're paying billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. I was the one that complained about it. All right, that was the president just a short time ago, his rally in Pennsylvania, ripping the Russia hoax. And just moments ago, President Trump, he arrived at Morristown Airport in New Jersey, as I believe he is headed for Bedminster. Joining us now with reaction on this and so much more is the host of the number one rated cable show, 10 o'clock on Sunday evenings, Life, Liberty and Levin. Thank me. God bless us. And the host of CRTV's uh, the CRTV's Levin TV. Life, who Liberty, entire, and Levin. Who has an entire Levin network TV. named after them except you? Yes. Uh, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you? By the way, for five seconds, I, wa I want to join you in celebrating Rush Limbaugh's 30 years who made it possible for all of us to do what we do. The man has taken more spears and arrows, and it's such a great honor to call him my friend, and what he's done for this country is really incalculable. Anyway, go right ahead. Well, I got to tell you, and I mean this, without talk radio for 30 years and him leading that, that way and, and forging that path, and without Fox, I, I honestly, let's talk about Acosta and how corrupt this news media right. is. And they're a bunch of crybabies. Oh, they're calling us fake news. Oh, they're inciting. That's not violence. That's called freedom of speech. It's like, I guess they have freedom of the press to lie like they do. I would say this, you know, a lot has been said about uh, the president calling fake news the enemy of the people. I have a different take on this. Why do the press hate the American people? Over 65 million people, give or take, voted for Donald Trump for president of the United States. I wrote this down. Various press outlets, reporters, hosts, or their guests have called millions and millions of Americans Nazis, racists, deranged, cultists, deplorables, and even worse, how do the press in this country justify calling tens of millions of people such outrageous names? And we conservatives have watched as the press have destroyed, as they're seeking to destroy Trump, Palin, Bork, Clarence Thomas, Ronald Reagan, the list goes on and on and on. The D.C. press corps today is the least professional press corps in my lifetime. They think that their job is to make it impossible for the president to function, to sabotage him and to advance the cause of the ide ideologues, to advance the cause of a rogue prosecutor by the name of Mueller. And so the press really needs to, to be circumspect, take a look at itself. It won't. As long as they keep putting clowns like Jim Acosta out there, who is a drama queen of sorts and uh, who like to report on themselves and talk about themselves, as long as it's impossible to tell a late night comedian uh, from Jake Tapper and Jake Tapper from the porn star and all the rest of it. This is going to be the reaction of the American people. Well, if it wasn't so important, this is where, you know, thank God the American people have choices. I, and that we're a part of it is an honor. And I feel blessed to be able to do this, as I know you do. Let me ask you this and let you put on your attorney's hat for a minute. For those that don't know, you were the chief of staff or I think one of the greatest attorney generals ever. And that was Ed Meese. Um, why would they ever allow an illegitimate investigation run by Mueller and his merry band of Democratic donors to interview President Trump when there's no evidence, collusion's not a crime, no evidence whatsoever, it's been a witch hunt from day one. Look at what they're doing with Manafort. I think Attorney General Meese at this point would have stepped in. I honestly do. And, uh, Newt Gingrich was on to something there. Much of the power being exercised by the Deputy Attorney General in lieu of the Attorney General has nothing to do with, uh, with Jeff Sessions' recusal. Jeff Sessions will not be attacked by the media as long as he's quiet. quiet. The minute he speaks up or does something, he will be attacked. Look, the Manafort trial, here's what I don't get. Most of the issues they're raising, if he did all these things, bank fraud, embezzlement, uh, tax fraud, and all the rest, and he did it during the Obama administration, who was the FBI director? Mueller. Mueller was the FBI director. He did nothing about it. Apparently, 
when he was the FBI director. Apparently, they didn't know anything. So now Manafort is the campaign chairman for Donald Trump, and they throw 17 left-wing Democrat prosecutors at the guy who work for the special counsel. That is a matter for the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Virginia. That's number one. Now, uh, Mueller's pushing the other cases to the Southern District of New York. Then they set up Lieutenant General Mike Flynn. Then they have a few uh, uh, lesser lights here where they get for false statements or something like that. What the hell do we have this special counsel for? You don't want to know why? Because he wants Trump, and he wants to interview Trump, and he wants to get him on obstruction of justice. And now he's threatening, I hear, Perjury trap. that uh, you got, what he's going to do, you see, is issue a subpoena to pull the president in front of a grand jury. Let me tell you something, Mr. Mueller. You're not the king of the universe. And I hope the president's lawyers are listening to me and the president right now. Here's what you should tell Mr. Mueller. Have a meeting with him and tell him you're unconstitutional under the appointments clause. What you're doing is unconstitutional as far as we are concerned. We are not going to bow to you. This is the office of the president of the United States. You are a rogue prosecutor. Now get the hell out of my office and make sure the door doesn't hit you in the ass. I'll see you in court. That's the beginning and the end of it as far as I'm concerned. Let me ask you, I'm watching this thing on Manafort. I don't know what Paul Manafort did in 2005. I don't think Donald Trump who Paul, knew who Paul Manafort was in 2005. We know Judge Ellis was well, right. apparently Mueller didn't. He was the FBI director at uh, the time. I, I don't think the president knew him. I don't think anybody knew. But they pulled this out of mothballs just to put the screws to him so they could get him to sing or compose, as Judge Ellis said, so that they could prosecute or impeach Trump. In this whole tax case from 05, there'll be no talk of Russia. There's going to be no talk about the campaign. There'll be no talk about his work for Donald Trump. There'll be no talk of collusion. This is just a, this is just a cheap attempt to literally go after a guy they never would have gone after because they're trying at all costs to get the president. And so the question is, Rod Rosenstein, who gives a rubber stamp to all this and created this in the first place, by appointing his dear friend, the man he first worked for at the Justice Department, Mr. Mueller, who was uh, best friends with Mr. Comey. What a colossal disaster. Uh, you have Jeff Sessions, a man I've known for 30 years, who's sitting this out. He shouldn't be sitting it out. These are constitutional issues. And quite frankly, Mr. Mueller can't keep hiding behind his 17 left-wing Democrat donor prosecutors. Where the hell is Congress? I want to know. What Mr. Mueller thinks he can do under our Constitution, I want to know what Mr. Mueller well, thinks he I can do to... under the two Department of Justice memos as well. Mark, you know when I say tick-tock, something big is coming that will blow this all out of the water. Thank you for being with us. The great one, Mark Levin.